Hi folks, how's it going? Um, uh, today we're going to talk about deviance, one of my favorite topics in sociology. Um, deviance is a behavior, trait, or belief that departs from a norm and generates a negative reaction in a particular group. Um, deviance isn't necessarily bad. It's just different from what the group considers to be normal. For instance, a woman having a size 13 shoe isn't bad, but it's definitely different. So it might elicit a reaction from the group that makes up the majority, those with smaller feet. Uh, and then we will label that term deviant. And, and of course, that's making a social judgment, not a, war, a moral one. Um... Whether or not something is considered deviant is somewhat contingent on the time period. It changes over time. Uh, for example, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson both farmed cannabis during a time in which doing so was not deviant. And then we went through a long period of our country's history where growing cannabis, cannabis was deviant. And now we're entering into a new period where growing cannabis isn't. In reference to this, every state had made the use of marijuana illegal by 1937, and marijuana is associated with criminal behavior um, throughout most of our history, uh, especially in the, in the 20th century and into the 21st century. Um, farming of hemp and the increasing legality of recreational use of marijuana shows that deviance is changing once again. Um, deviance, of course, occurs across cultures. Uh, what's deviant in one culture may not be deviant in another culture. Uh, think about what might be deviant here that's not deviant someplace else and what that might not be deviant um, someplace else is deviant here. Some theories of deviance, of course, we start with functionalism. Uh, for the functionalist, deviance serves a function in our society. According to Emile Durkheim, deviance serves a positive social function by clarifying moral boundaries and promoting social cohesion. Without seeing deviant behavior, we would have a hard time classifying what is normal. It isn't until our group norms are challenged that we come together as a group to defend those norms. Um, a good example of this is, is the, uh, the use of new personal pronouns to describe people and how the idea of he and she have now turned into he, she, they, their, gi, gi, um, uh, and this is creating some real pushback from those who adhere to the social norm of the dichotomy of he and she. Uh, another example is the tragic events of September 11th. Um, this challenged a norm that many people in the United States took for granted, which was safety. And, of course, when the norm was challenged by the terrorist attack, new policies and procedures were put into place, um, much like the Patriot Act, which never would have been passed if it weren't for the terrorist attacks in the United States. Um, the functionalists adhere to a social control theory. Uh, this theory was developed by Travis Hershey and explains crime. Uh, strong bonds increase conformity and strong bonds decrease deviance. So these strong bonds include family, religion, and civic ties, among others, and those will hopefully 
have an impact on individuals and prevent them from creating crime or engaging in criminal acts. But who knows, maybe your family's criminal. So they pass on those norms to you and you buck the social system. Um, another functionalist theory is structural strain theory. This was developed by Robert Merton. Um, and it states that there are goals in our society that people want to achieve, but they cannot always reach those goals. And this creates a stress or a strain. Um, structural strain theory, i.e. strain theory, acknowledges that there are certain goals that society deems acceptable. Maybe something like earning money. So you have to think about what those goals encourage us to do and what we might do if we don't have enough money to gain access to a nice car, a big house, a family, a good job, and lots of money. So when we think about the American dream and the idea that there is a common theme about what Americans should achieve to be successful, we have to take in consideration strain theory um, because not everybody is able to attain the dream, at least not through the socially acceptable um, uh, means. And therefore, they're going to experience strain and they're going to think about how they navigate around it. Um, of course, Merton came up with the typology of deviance. As we see in this table, the possible combinations of goals and means acceptance um, run through conformity, innovation, ritualism, and retreat retreatism and um, can ultimately uh, result in rebellion. Remember, goals are not individual or personal goals like saving enough money to buy a new MP3 player. They're socially acceptable goals like the American dream, having a good job, a nice home, a car, money, and so on. Means are ways of making that happen. For instance, means may refer to the socially acceptable routines to achieving the aforementioned goals. Uh, like going to college, working hard, starting at the bottom of the company ladder, but working your way up, and so on. Um, so how we go from the goals that society is setting up for us and attaining those goals is, um, is what Merton's getting at with his typology of, or of deviance. Uh, conflict theory is another a uh, way to uh, interpret deviance. Uh, as far as conflict theories uh, are concerned, deviance is a result of, con of social conflict. Uh, and in order for the powerful to main maintain their power, they marginalize and criminalize the people who threaten their power. Uh, uh, in, in this case, inequality is reproduced in the way deviance is defined. Uh, for example, vagrancy laws are in place because the people in power i.e. representatives of the dominant culture, have deemed vagrant, vagrants to be deviants. Uh, sociologist William Chambliss looked at how vagrancy laws have been applied differently over the years to homeless, unemployed, racial minorities, or whoever seemed most threatening at the time. He determined that vagrancy laws actually reproduce inequality in our society, a great way of thinking about this is the Occupy movement that happened, um, I don't know, maybe about seven or eight years ago, where people were occupying vagrant or people were occupying public spaces and uh, vagrancy laws were used to move them out of the public space. Uh, Richard Quinney uh, also blames capitalism and the end inevitable exploitation for creating a situation in which deviant and criminal behavior are inescapable for the working class. Um, another uh, theoretical perspective is, of course, symbolic interactionism, 
where interpersonal relationships and everyday interactions influence meanings and understandings of deviance and how we interact with them. Um, differential association, of course. Um, coming back to Edwin Sutherland, uh, differential associations is a symbolic interactionist pers perspective. And it states that we learn deviance from interacting with deviant peers. Uh, Sutherland suggested that the main reason that people become deviant is that they are learning to be that way from the people that they associate with. Um, this theory of deviance may remind you of social learning theory, which says that we tend to mimic significant role models in our life. Uh, labeling theory, of course, a symbolic interactionist perspective developed by Howard Becker. Um, Becker states that deviance is caused by external judgments or labels that change a person's self-concept and the way others respond to him or her. Becker suggests that labeling can lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy um, or a prediction that causes itself to come true. Uh, Becker asserted that when people are labeled, the label becomes part of their self-image. So if someone tells you that you are smart, you might start perceiving yourself as smart. Likewise, if someone tells you you are bad or you're stupid, you might start to act as if you are bad or you're stupid. Um, one of the problems is that labeling a person can lead to the person acting out their label. This is especially true if that, is, if that label is anchored or confirmed among many agents of socialization. Um, symbolic interactionists also um, take in consideration stereotype threat or stereotype promises. The stereotype threat um, is a self-fulfilling prophecy in which the fear of performing poorly and thereby confirming stereotypes about one social group causes students to perform poorly. And the stereotype promise is self-fulfilling prophecy in which positive stereotypes lead to positive performance outcomes. Um, of course, stigma, the term coined by Irving Goffman, describes any physical or social attribute that devalues a person or group's identity in which, uh, and, and which may exclude those who are devalued from social interaction. Stigma can be a physical, moral, or tribal uh, characteristic. For instance, a physical impairment might be... Um, might stigmatize or devalue a potential employee at a workplace. A moral stigma could uh, focus in on character flaws. A tribal stigma could be based on a membership to a discredited group. And then we've got to take in consideration passing, which is certainly easier for some individuals than others. For example, morally stigmatized individuals may be able to conceal their, conceal their beliefs, whereas a physically stigmatized individual may have a more difficult time trying to conceal the impairment that causes the stigmatization. Um, this may also cause the case with criminals who commit crimes but then go to work and live their lives as non-criminals. Um, I have a friend who uh, was part of a murder in high school and she served her time, she came out, and she's now passing in society as a person that really didn't engage in those criminal actions. She removed herself from the environment that stigmatized her and uh, has been uh, doing a lot better since. Um, when we think about deviance, we also have to take this through the study of crime. So if deviance is referring to an act or behavior that is simply different from what the majority group typically does and thus generally receives a negative response, in the United States, eating a guinea pig would be considered deviant because most people don't do that. But in Peru, many people do eat guinea pigs. Um, when we start attaching punishment to deviance, that's when we're looking at crime. And criminology looks at the study of crime, criminals, and criminal justice in a systematic and scientifically uh, appropriate way. Uh, it accepts that crime does not happen in a vacuum and that it is intersectional.